All right, so now let's move on to our um, third and final instrument type. Again, we're gonna go into project setup. We'll go into the online designer and we're gonna create a new instrument. And we're gonna add that instrument here. And we're gonna call this um, physical exam. Create. Okay, now we're gonna go in and uh, edit this physical exam instrument to create the field. So we're now on our third and final page of the 101 exercise handout. Uh, we're gonna start by adding a field a text box field, uh, we're going to call it date of physical exam, give it the variable name PED, set up month day Y validation, save it. And now we're going to um, demonstrate how to use uh, and practice using a matrix of fields. So we're going to click this button, add matrix of fields. Um, and we're going to give it the optional um, ma matrix header text, uh, physical exam. And now we're going to uh, build the matrix using similar fields to what we saw in the typical field types. So we have field labels, just like we have in the regular field types, but you can add multiple rows here. Um, so let's go, we're going to add one, two, three, four, five different rows here. So first we're going to put in H-E-E-N-T, which I believe is head, ears, eyes, nose, throat. Uh, the second field label will be respiratory. So here we're not actually you know, asking questions. This is going to be somebody doing the physical exam, and they're just going to enter some information for each of these field labels. Again, each of these field labels is going to have the exact same matrix column choices, the, basically the same answer choices. That's just how a matrix works. So if you ask, you could ask, you know, 10, 20, 30 questions in a single matrix. If you want to change the answer choices, then you would create a second matrix for the follow-ups. Okay, next uh, we'll put in cardiovascular, add another row, gastrointestinal, add another row, musculoskeletal. Oops, skeletal. Oh. Musk you, let's see if I can spell. Okay, we have to give each variable name, so let's just call this A-G-E-N-T, um, respiratory, uh, cardio, gastro, and then like muscle. Okay, um, and now our matrix column choices, you can code anything in here. So again, a common example is um, strongly disagree, disagree, uh, neutral, agree, strongly agree. You could code this, those in here. I'm just going to use um, something for this, like a PE exam, where we would probably code in like normal or abnormal. And then it's also a good idea for that type of question. Um, to maybe include something else like not done. So if this is blank and for some reason you know that the attending physician or the nurse practitioner didn't do a physical exam that time, maybe there was a time constraint or something, they could just put, they could code in not done. Uh, so you don't just wonder forever why that, that those fields are blank. Um, we're gonna just have a single answer option, but you could make um, any matrix into checkboxes, which would accept multiple choices. Um, and there's also a new feature to allow ranking. We're not going to use that in this case, but it's available if you wanted people to rank, for instance, a bunch of things from first, you know, their first preference to their last preference. Uh, we do have to give it a matrix group name here. I'm just going to call it, um, uh, this is like a variable name, but for the whole, um, the whole matrix, and I'm just going to call it PE and we'll save it. And now that whole thing will be built here. And you can see this is really one of the main advantages of a matrix that, you know, an attending physician could just work down this list. If they, if they do the physical exam and everything's normal, it's a bit faster for them to just go down the list like this and be done with it, um, rather than, you know, clicking each question and selecting from a dropdown or checkbox. Okay. So that kind of, uh, of le leads us to the end of our online designer section. I'm going to just return to our list of instruments. We can see all three here. 
I'll do a quick uh, demonstration of the record status dashboard now that we have a number of new, uh, new instruments and some records. So if we go into record status dashboard, we can see we have three records that we made, right? These are our three test records that we entered together. Two of them are complete for the pre-screening form and the third is complete for the follow-up. None have the physical exam. You could also get in to modify your records through this. So if you know, you know, subject study subject one has come back in and now you're gonna do your follow-up or your physical exam, you could just click that to open it and begin editing. Um, you can also access that same thing from add and edit records. If you know study subject one came in and now you wanna access the, you know, the follow-up, you could do it that way too. So the record status dashboard and add or edit records are the two ways that you really go to um, take stock of existing records or to modify them.